Hey guys, here is mom in the garden or Sabina, the formal way of saying. <laughs> and today I have Lisa with me. She came from Estonia and she's a zero waste blogger and a coach. So if you need any information, you can always contact her. I'm gonna put all the information below so you know where to find everything about her and her blog. This video is all about Lisa and her experience living in Slovenia as a zero waster. We're gonna talk about her perspective on zero waste living in Slovenia, what difficulties she has, and what are the like benefits. How long are you here in Slovenia? So I've been living here for almost one month and a half. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm an intern in a company that's also zero waste. And this company is called My Water. And what they're trying to do is to enable travelers to refill their bottles on the go. You're living here for more than a month, so you have the enough time, I think, <laughs> to experience, to see how we live. What's your first perspective when you come here? What did you see? What did you think? What I noticed is the way uh, the trash is sorted here. So there are recycling bins everywhere. Uh, there are sh bike sharing uh, opportunities. There's an opportunity to get a bike for three euros a year, which is insane. And that also... <laughs> <laughs> no, for example, in Spain it's 20 euros per year. It's not expensive. No. But still, three years like nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's nothing and it's so comfortable as a foreigner to go around the city and, and discover everything. And also I noticed that you have milk automats, you can take whipped cream from the automat, you can take honey from the automat and uh, it's also a zero waste opportunity. What about the transportation? Did you go uh, out of the town, for, uh, out of the city of Ljubljana? Yeah, yes, I did. I go, went to some caves to see some mountains. I went to the coast where there was 24 Celsius. <laughs> While in Ljubljana, when I left from here, it was a 3 Celsius. <laughs> so the temperature can vary a lot in quite a small area. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to go skiing, you can go skiing. If you want to go swimming, you can go swimming in, in May, for example. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> but how did you like the transportation to get there? Like, did you take the train or the bus that goes to other towns? Uh, yeah, for the case we took the train. Mm -hmm. And for the mountains, uh, we went by bus and it was, it was all right. And we also tried a car sharing app. It didn't work out for us that day very mm -hmm. well and for that specific location. But we had to hitchhike at some okay. point. Nice. Huh? And people were so <laughs> friendly and nice. And I thought we, we are going to walk uh, near the road for half an hour be before someone stops. But it took us five minutes. <laughs> and How many of you were there? Three. Okay, that's manageable. Yeah. <laughs> so did you find out the car sharing avant to go or some other type of car sharing? Uh, I think the app is called Provoz. Prevozi. Prevozi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dot org. Yeah. Okay, so we also have uh, avant to go. This yeah. is um, car sharing, but there's only electric cars. We have more stations like here, is all, there are two nearby. But the thing is, you have to apply first, you have to wait to get like education, it's a few hours of education. You register and then you can run, rent a car, electric one. Okay. I like it. The only problem is you have to like, if you go for longer distances, for example, if you're a tourist, if you want to go to the Venice, you have to find uh, several stations to recharge the car so you can come back. <laughs> Yeah. But that's not, not a problem, but you need time, you have to organize yourself. Okay, let's go straight to buying food, because we know that the majority of waste we bring into our homes is by buying food. So how did you manage in this area? So here we have a market that has a lot of fresh produce uh, nearby. Uh, I brought bought some uh, <laughs> veggies and fruits from there even got some cheese and the option is very colorful 
Then we also have a bakery, also five minutes away, fresh yeah. bread, nice smelling, <laughs> just just the best. And then I used the bike to go to Refusal, which is a local zero waste shop here. And Refusal has helped me a lot with uh, many things. And I was quite surprised that they also offer some dairy for both vegans and non-vegans so it's, yeah. i think the options at least in this area for me they are they're great they're yeah. really good and it was quite easy to be zero waste here can you compare estonia and slovenia and buying food so i think we have less bakeries but you can buy fresh bread um, fruits, veggies, nuts, seeds from a regular shop, package free. Yeah. Um, if you are clever enough, you may even get meat and fish from, from the shop. But definitely the best opportunities to be zero waste are in cities. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I lived in the second biggest populated city in Estonia and, and also the capital. Mm -hmm. And I think it was quite easy. We don't have specialized zero waste shops, but I had a bio market, yeah, so, yeah. which sells <laughs> loose uh, bulk dry goods. Uh -huh. um, bought yes. some things from there. Um, we have a market where you can get uh, all kinds of products as well, uh, but it still really depends on where you live and what your opportunities are. I think that's the same for everyone. Yeah, I think so. But like you said, in bigger towns, bigger cities, you have more opportunities. Yeah, That's what I found out when I went to like uh, for a few days to other parts of Slovenia. They're just villages and their biggest like shop is one of the giants. I'm going to say the chain uh, stores and they don't have a lot of things. So yeah, in bigger cities, bigger towns, you have more opportunities, that's true. And always visit the market first. I yeah. think that's like the goal. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so you're buying with your bags, your, your containers. Um, how's the response here? So it's quite the same as in Estonia. So you have to be quick because they are really used to grabbing the plastic bag yeah. if they see ne the next person. So you pass the bag and, s and point on what you want because many of the, at least the people in the market, they don't speak English, which is fine. We, yeah. we still manage to communicate really well. And you give the bag and you show and they understand it and it's fine. I think like there, there only have been some language barrier situations where the person is like no 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 and <laughs> <laughs> and you and you don't you don't know how to explain them that, yeah. no i want this thing in my bag yeah but this is this only happens when you pass the bag to like so you immediately give them give the bag to them show what you want and yeah everything will be fine that's the same in like in every language that happens to me in slovenia i said no bag no bag no bag i know how to say it but of course, like you said, first put the bag there so they see it yeah. and then they're, they're going to understand that it. it's not like that difficult. But okay, bag is one thing, but what about containers? Did you buy anything in the, to the containers from the stores nearby except um, re refusal? I brought uh, bought <laughs> <laughs> I bought some cheese uh, okay. into my box and yeah, it was let so me show. So this is the one that I brought from Estonia. Uh -huh, I just yeah. took it from home. I didn't buy anything for it to be zero waste. Yeah, use what you can. Yeah, use what you have. And you gave me this one, yeah. which is I would say it's it looks nicer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's heavier. That's the difference between glass and plastic. I like still plastic that I have from before or from my mother's. Yeah. I use it all over the uh, time. And glass is heavier, so yeah. Yeah. You have to like wave your options. <laughs> what else was like surprising for you when you came here? Well, I think uh, <laughs> definitely the automats that have eggs and milk and uh, <laughs> and whipped cream and all, all these choices. They, they are not all zero waste, but these were really surprising for me. And of course, the nature is... My <laughs> God, I think if, 
if someone asks me where should I travel this year then I would say Slovenia because <laughs> you get so many different and amazing experiences and I was walking with my jaw to the floor in this country I, I and and it's it's it actually it gets even at some point it, it even gets exhausting because everything is so amazing that <laughs> that you run out of energy to be so amazed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of spaces, a lot of places you can visit, but you can't visit everything. Yeah. And even I'm like finding out recently that there's several places I didn't know about, and I'm like 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you you're never you're never gonna see everything. No. But I think the purpose is like also by traveling. I, I don't know if you know, but I've decided that one year I'm not going to fly anywhere because mm -hmm. I used to fly like two or three times a year. That's like a lot um, to visit my friends in Spain because I used to live there. And that's just one example. And I said no flying for one year. So I decided I'm going to explore my own country. I think that's a good thing because yeah. you can do, okay, you go there by car, but you're not doing the big distances. You can use your bike. For example, we go somewhere and then we bike around it. So that's a good option. And yeah, I think that's also something to think about. Explore your own country. Yes, definitely. And yeah. uh, also staying in a place uh, for a long time to, if you have exactly. the opportunity to work somewhere and stay for a longer time and discover more of the city and, and support the local economy, then do that. I actually flew here. Uh, I considered many options, but uh, due to personal reasons, I decided yeah. that flying was the best option for me. But I decided to compensate it through a website called Mindful Flights. Mm -hmm. So oh. free flights uh, that I took. I took two flights here and I'm going back in one. They cost me like 12 euros to compensate. And people don't think it's it can be actually... Wow. It is actually quite cheap to support uh, projects and compensate your footprint. Nice, I didn't know about yeah. that. I'm gonna put it the link down below. It was really nice having you here. So we're gonna make also other videos and me and Lisa are going shopping. So maybe we're gonna put this in this video, the shopping part or into another. We're gonna see that. Yeah. Okay, have uh, fun, go outside anywhere in the world you are because it's like beautiful. You have to be outside as much as possible. And thank you, Lisa, it was so nice. Thank you, Sabina. <laughs> Bye. Bye.